Hello, everybody. Uh, Curtis Woodkey, principal at St. John's Lutheran School, here to share with you information about our Soaring to New Heights campaign and where we're at. So I'm glad you're here. Glad you're watching this video. We've had a lot of these uh, presentations, um, but not everybody's been able to attend. So I wanted to do a video to share with you some of this information. Our mission at St. John's is that we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. We promote academic excellence, make disciples, and equip them for service. And this mission statement really does guide our decisions and our planning. So why are we here today? With Why am I making this video? Because I want to share with you some important things that are happening at St. John's. I want to take a look at our need and, and the, the things that are currently happening, talk about some solutions that we've planned. Um, and uh, normally in these gatherings, I would answer questions, but you can always contact me and I'll give you that information at the end um, and uh, ask you to uh, partner with us to accomplish our goals. So the need is really all about space. Uh, we are simply out of space here at St. John's. Um, we are currently using First Presbyterian uh, and we are fifth grade is there. We're also using classrooms that were never intended to be classrooms. They're just too small um, to do to have the best learning environment for our students. Um, we are using every nook and cranny that we have. And so we're using a lot of the church spaces that we want to be able to give back uh, to the church. Um, we continue to double classes. Six years ago, we started with doubling kindergarten and now we're all the way up through fifth grade. Next year, we'll have a double sixth grade. And in order to accommodate space for that, we're actually moving fourth grade over to First Presbyterian as well. So fourth and fifth grade will be at First Presbyterian next year. And then we are committed to adding the high school grades. Um, so we've been blessed with this tremendous growth and we think we're gonna continue to grow, but that's created this need for space. First Presbyterian has been great. It's been a, a temporary solution, but we know it's not the long-term answer. We value their partnership, um, but we know we've got to do something else. Um, in addition to all of those extra classrooms that we need, um, there are some specialized areas that, that we don't have right now. We don't have an art room. That happens in our fellowship hall uh, for lots of our classes or in the classroom space. Um, and the music room that we're using is really a church uh, space, and it's just too small to do what we want to do in terms of of music classes. Uh, we actually end up tutoring in the hallway a lot of times because we don't have that space um, for tutoring. Um, our gym uh, is wonderful. We have a full-size uh, basketball court. It works well for sports um, and uh, PE, uh, but the real issue is seating and we don't have very much seating in there. So we can't host any type of tournaments or regional play or anything like that because we just don't have sufficient seating. Um, and then our library, we have two libraries, one in the church building, one in the school building. But again, those are in small spaces. The one in the school building is actually in a hallway. Um, we're making it work, uh, but it's less than ideal. So knowing this need, um, and, and this isn't anything new, we've, we've known this is coming. Um, about two years ago, there was a growth committee that was developed and uh, launched to look at this need and to evaluate different options. And, and they came up with the, 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 the recommendation that we should build a new building, not add on to one of our existing buildings. And we should do it though right here on our campus. Um, and so there was a, a, a design that was developed by an art architect even, and it was released a little over a year ago. Um, it had 50,000 square feet um, and it was designed for about $300 a square foot. That was a $15 million project and it just really wasn't uh, feasible and realistic. And so that growth committee last summer, almost a year ago, uh, kind of said, okay, we're done with our part. Uh, and then our church split that growth committee. And so that we developed a building committee to look at what can we build, what is feasible, um, and a campaign committee that, that had the job of saying, okay, how are we going to raise the funds to do this? And so those committees have been working. The building committee took 
our need, what, what it is that we really need. And there's some things we'd like to have, but what is it that we really need? Um, and started making that list and, and talking through all of that and making sketchings and drawings and different things. And we ended up uh, with, a, with a sketch of a potential building that um, we then took, I took to a, an architect that I've worked with before and he made up this, uh, this drawing. And so the design for this building um, was to, the idea was to have fourth through eighth grade. The building overall will hold grades four through 12, but uh, fourth through eighth grade is over on this side, fourth, fifth grade, sixth, seventh and eighth, uh, two classrooms for each grade level. Um, some junior high locker rooms, bathrooms, different things. So that was all over on this side. Then the other side would be the high school. And so you have high school locker rooms, a number of high school classrooms. And this was designed specifically so that we could add on very easily by extending this hallway. We could add on more classrooms over in this area. And this actually storage room right here could also be an extended hallway where we could actually add on some additional classrooms up there as well. We could add on nine classrooms in a second phase very feasibly. Um, in the middle was the shared spaces. And so we had a commons area. There's not a full kitchen in this um, building. We have a wonderful kitchen in our school building, so we'll have to move food um, to this, but that's where we would we would eat lunch. Um, a full-size gymnasium with uh, seven rows of bleachers on each side give us space for about uh, 450 people, um, a music band room, an art classroom, uh, and those would be used by both the high school and the four through eight, and then some office area here as well. So that's what the original plan that we came up with. We sent this out to bid. And so uh, we sent it to a couple different builders. Our goal was to keep it under $200 a square foot. Some of the builders thought we were kind of crazy with that figure, but that was really our goal. And so we got some bids back and we selected to go with Drake Homes. Um, and I'm not going to play this full uh, video. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Play this full, full video for you. Um, but it just introduces Drake Homes as the builder that we've selected we love Drake Homes for a few reasons. They're local out of Charleston. Even though they're called Drake Homes, they've done tons of commercial projects. This by any means isn't the largest project that they've taken on. Um, and they're very passionate about Christian education. Um, the vice president of Drake Homes is Avery, Adam, uh, Avery Drake Adams. And uh, she has her three-year-old enrolled for pre-K next week and has already put her newborn on our waiting list. Uh, they're just very passionate about Christian education and have a belief in St. John's. And so um, that's why we've decided to work with Drake Holmes. They came back then and we've worked with them to, to take that initial sketch and make some adjustments to it. Not much, um, but we've added the lockers. We've added some, some double uh, entryways here and, and, and some different things with the, the office space, uh, moved some things around for bathrooms. Um, the art room and music room are still there and same. So it's generally the same design. We've just added some things to it, tweaked things just a, a little bit. Um, in developing those uh, those spaces. They also came up with an exterior elevation. And so this is the front that would face Charleston Street in our in our open um, lot where our, our green space, our playground is and everything. Um, and then the other side elevations, the back would be facing our, our school building. This is actually made of a concrete exterior, but it would be stamped to look like brick. And so it's a, it's a concrete exterior, then with a metal roof and a metal rise for the gym area. Some extra stonework and different things around some of the entrances. Um, not super fancy, but something that we can be proud of um, and that'll look good in our on our campus here. Um, this would be basic location for it, uh, for this building. Uh, we have now petitioned the city to give us Second Street since we own the property on both sides of Second Street. Um, the church building being over in this area, of course, the school building being up, up top here. And so this might actually shift over just a little bit um, along Second Street. There's an easement back here, so we can't move back any further. And the uh, the parking lot probably won't go all the way over here for right now. Um, you can see that our, our playground where it is right now would be able to stay 
uh, for now. Um, if we were going to do an addition later, that would come on uh, that next phase. Um, but this would give us the space to be able to do everything. Now, I, sure, we're losing our grain space. And so we've thought about that. And we've been working with First Presbyterian. So not only are we leasing classrooms for next year until we get the new building built, but we've also talked to them about leasing the green space that they have. The community garden is here and the um, prayer garden that they have. But then there's a bunch of green space over here between um, those gardens and their building and facility. And so we've been able to work out a lease for that space. So we can move our soccer field over there. Um, eventually we can move playground things over there and stuff like that as well. So um, it, it works for us to, to be able to use that, that green space. So all of this is a $7 million project. Drake Homes came back with a $6.56 .6 million bid. There's some things that weren't in their bid that we want to do. There's some security features and some technology things and furnishings and, and stuff like that that weren't in um, the, um, the Drake bid. And so we're continuing to call it a $7 million project. It might come in at 6.85, 6.9. We're not sure. Um, but to be on the safe side, we're, we're figuring it to, to be $7 million. So then the campaign committee um, has started doing their work um, back in the fall. And they said, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to finance this building? How are we going to make this happen? And we developed the plan for a campaign. Um, and we launched the silent phase of the campaign back in late November. And then we launched the public phase of the campaign in uh, February. And so the total goal of the campaign is to raise this $7 million. Now, the good news is our church has a growth fund that already has almost $900,000 in it. So that kind of gave us a head start. And, and we worked backwards to figure out what, all, all these numbers. So if it's a $7 million project, we've got 900,000. That takes us down to about 6.1 million. And then we said, okay, if we can't raise 6.1, how much could we take? Take on in mortgage and how could we manage those payments and different things and we came up with in crunching all those numbers it was looking like about two 2.1 2.2 million that we could take on in mortgage and so again backing that down um, that said we had to reach four million in new pledges and gifts before we could break ground uh, so if we if we don't raise much more than that, we can, we can take on the mortgage if we have to, but we can do it. We can make this work if we get to four million. So when we started working on this, it was right after our auction, which was a huge success. And I'm so thankful for all the people that uh, that helped with our auction, came to the auction, made that auction a success. But it was over Easter break and we were saying, OK, now we've got this auction fund. Where are we at? And at that point, we had raised Two million seven hundred eighteen thousand. We had thirty-two major gifts, and by major gifts we mean ten thousand dollars or more. And this is a three-year campaign, so people can make pledges over those three years. It's not all a one up for, uh, up front type of thing. So a lot of our our donors have done ten thousand a year for three years for a total of thirty thousand. Other donors would do $100 a month for 36 months for a total of $3,600. Um, and every pledge counts. And so that's where we were at uh, on April 9th over Easter break. So we said, wow, to get to 4 million, we still have to raise about 1.3 million. And the timing is crucial for us because we really want to be in this new facility by the 24-25 school year. And Drake Holmes has told us this is about a one-year build, okay? And so that means we need to break ground this summer in order to be able to have the building completed, hopefully, and be in it by the 24-25 school year. So um, we said, okay, what if we could raise $100,000 a week for 13 weeks. That would be the 1.3 million that we need. And that would give us till middle of July. And so that would, we could still break ground then. We could get the building going. We could, should be able to have it done by the 24, 25 school year. So that's what we did. And that's what we started. And as of to, as of uh, yesterday, um, we were at $3,142,360 that, that we've raised in new pledges and gifts. So that is 44 major gifts now that are $10,000 or more and a total of 119 gifts. So we've made a 
huge amount of progress. Um, and, and it really feels like we're on the final countdown. So we started that April 9th, we're counting things down, and we have about $857,000 yet to raise uh, by the middle of uh, the summer in order to put the, the shovel in the ground and get this thing rolling. Um, and so we got to get to that uh, $4 million. We think that's going to take 50 major gifts, maybe even more, um, but we know we're going to need some more major gifts yet in order to get us um, to that 4 million mark. But we think it's also going to take widespread support. And we're going to need 500 gifts at least um, to be able to hit our goal. And currently, we only have 119. So we're close on the major gifts, but we're not anywhere close on total number of gifts. And we really think we're going to have to get to that 500 mark in order to make this happen. And so that's what we're doing right now. We've had a whole bunch of these campaign gatherings and, and we're launching a crowdfunding effort. We're doing all kinds of different things because we want to increase that broad support for this project. In addition to this building and the need that we have and the campaign that we're doing, there's a whole bunch of other things going on behind the scenes. We don't really talk about these things very much. So I wanted to share some quick thoughts with you about this and you'll hear more about these things in the coming months. Uh, first of all, curriculum review. We have an incredible set of teachers. They are fantastic and they are really good at what they do in the classroom. But one of the things that I recognized when I got here last summer is that we don't necessarily have a good flow from grade to grade, class to class. Um, we, we Some of our curriculum didn't provide that full scope and sequence that we needed to have and, and develop. And we noticed that the most important area right away was English language arts. And so we put together a faculty committee. We started taking a look at English language arts, what we're doing, what we really want to do, what are the non-negotiables for us. Then we started looking at different programs out there, different curriculums um, that are published, and uh, we continued to narrow it down and we selected um, what we're planning on do. Now, right now, this is kindergarten through fifth grade. Miss Nina does a wonderful job in preschool, and we don't really have any changes planned for for our with our preschool teachers. Uh, but for K through fifth, we're going to continue to use Fontes and Pinnell guided reading. It's a wonderful program where it evaluates where each student is at in terms of their reading level, um, and then we in using small group instruction, we can meet those individual students where they are at in terms of their reading level and help them to grow. So that's the small group instruction we've. We have that now. We're going to continue to use that. In fact, we've got some people coming in um, to train our faculty to make the most of that. And then we chose to go with a, a program called My View Literacy, published by Savas. It's an educational publishing company for whole group instruction. So it includes all the rest of the English language arts, and it's going to fit in with that Fontes and Pinnell guided reading for the small group and My View Literacy for the whole group. Now we're also working on middle school and making some tweaks and adjustments there. We've got a new middle school ELA teacher coming in because uh, we're doubling sixth grade for next year. And so we needed another middle school teacher and that is going to be um, Mrs. Dawn Drake. We're so excited to have her on our staff for next year and she'll be teaching the middle school English. And so well, we're gonna work with her and our current teachers to develop what it, exactly the tweaks that we need to make for middle school English language arts. Another area that we're working on is math. Um, last uh, spring, summer before I got here, um, a, a math program called Reveal Math was selected. And there's some great things about Reveal. It just not has not been a good fit for us. Um, it's been a little bit of a challenge and, and we're just not seeing the growth that we wanna see from that. And, and there's just some things that, that aren't a good fit for us here at St. John's. And so again, we formed a faculty committee, started taking a look at that. And uh, we've narrowed that down to two new, uh, two math programs that are more traditional um, in, in their style um, and are more clear cut in the direction that we, we want to go. So we're going to be going with that as well. We're also investing in a new um, social emotional learning uh, curriculum called Frenzy, which is specifically a biblically based uh, curriculum. So those are the things happening. We're going to continue to review curriculum and, and make some, some good decisions there. Accreditation. I love accreditation. Most people do not. We are currently an accredited school. 
Um, but accreditation is every five years and next year is the cycle year for us. So we have to go through re-accrediting. It's a ton of work and that's why most people don't like it. I like it because it makes you look at everything you do, everything we do as a school to make sure we're doing it in the best way possible. And so that's the accreditation process. We'll be forming committees and looking for parent help and all kinds of different things with those committees over the coming months. So um, then we'll have a team that'll visit us probably next March or April. Um, that is kind of the culmination in accreditation. So we've been doing a lot of the behind the scenes work, getting ready uh, for that accreditation process. We've also developed a new professional development program. Our teachers are really good at what we do, but we always expect to be able to even get better. There, things change within education. There's new ideas. And, and so we want to make sure that our teachers are continuing to develop themselves and to grow. I expect of, that of myself and want that of our teachers as well. So we've developed this new professional development program that means we're going to be bringing in more people to teach us how to make the most of different curriculums and all the best practices and those types of things. But it also gives the teachers a whole bunch of options in things that they can do to continue to grow themselves uh, in their profession. Extracurricular activities. We have a ton of sports, which I'm excited about and want to continue to develop our, our sports, but we're also missing some of the other non-sports things that we used to have. COVID came and kind of wrecked a lot of that stuff, but want to bring those things back. And not just for middle school, but for some of the younger ages as well. So we want to develop the chess club and the gardening club and the scholastic bowl team and, and all of those types of things. Um, and, and so we're working on plans for that. We've got things that are coming together um, for those extracurricular activities. And we might add some sports too. We've already had golf as a team sport for next year. And so our middle school students uh, can join that golf team in the fall if they would like. Um, we're looking at maybe softball, um, but we also want to continue to develop the sports programs that we have. So you, you'll find that we'll have more extracurricular activities next year and beyond. And finally, student support services. We serve uh, a lot of students with varying academic abilities, and we want to make sure that our top students are absolutely challenged and, and, uh, and that they can continue to excel in, in academics. We've also got some students that need additional support and additional help, and, and so we're working on developing a program that would do all of these things, that would give that support to the students that need it, it would challenge the high end, and that would really help us to, to, to to support all of the students that God has uh, placed with us and, and has, uh, has blessed us to be able to work with. So in addition to the building camp and the campaign, lots of other things happening um, to improve what we do here at St. John's. So you've heard all of this information now. We want to invite you to partner with us. We would love to have you uh, come on board with us, make a donation to the campaign, volunteer to be a student tutor, all of these types of things. We would love to have you be a part uh, of St. John's. And so there's many different ways that you can make a gift. Um, certainly you can contact, contact us here at the school and we'd be happy to talk with you about that. We have uh, uh, different ways to do that. You can also go on our website and I should have put it up on here, but it's STJLS for St. John's Lutheran School, stjls-mattoon.com. And there's a fundraising uh, tab and you can go to the campaign button. And on there, there's a, a button that says support the campaign. You can give right online. It's very simple. It could be a one-time gift, but even better, it can be an ongoing gift um, that will continue for a monthly. Um, like I said, this is a three-year campaign. So a lot of people are given $50 a month, which adds up. I mean, that's an $1,800 gift after three years or $100 a month that ends up being a $3,600 $600 gift. And those are the types of gifts that we really need right now to help us finish and, and reach our goal. Um, but even if it's a one-time gift of 20 bucks, we're so thankful for that because it all matters. It all makes a difference uh, to us and, and achieving our goals. What's next? We're going to continue to do some things that are focused on the campaign. We did these grade level gatherings. Now we're doing gatherings for, for grandparents, for church members, for business leaders. Um, we had a phone a thon We're going to have more of those. We're going to have a crowdfunding campaign. So there's going to be a whole bunch of different ways that you're able to uh, to, uh, that, to to get more people to come with us and partner with us uh, to accomplish our goals. Um, so that's happening. 
summer's coming quick and uh, we want to be able to break ground yet this summer. And, and so that's what it's all about. So appreciate you watching this video. I, I'm, I just wanted to make sure that I uh, shared with you uh, the things that are happening here at, um, at St. John's. And so thank you so much. Please don't hesitate to call us uh, or email us if you have any questions. Um, my, uh, our school number is 217-234-4911. Again, that's 217-234-4911. Um, and uh, you can reach me here uh, email-wise at C Woodkey. Uh, Woodkey is W U D T K E at stjls-mattoon.com. Okay, so see Woodkey at stjls-mattoon.com. Stop by our office. We're more than happy to talk with you and share with you, answer any of your questions. So that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. And uh, we will see you soon.